Yeah. Once um once we get back from um I'll start putting together a bet So if we know that then we should be getting um specific feathers so that means that we're hearing on the staff and all that that would be the added staff. It's one of the things I wanna do before I do that.
I should know better than to follow rocks. Um, Miigwetch to rocks for the pipe and to the drum. It just warms my heart to have that here today. Buju Gakanawiya Stephanie Nin Nindish Nikaz. Nigachiwanang Ishkognagneg in Donjiba. Nigachiwanang Gabe Gitan Nasin Wigamigan in Danoke. Nawidu Kaz Jaganaweg Demang O O Gabe Gikandasa Wigamig. Hello everyone. My name is Stephanie. I am from the Fond du Lac Reservation. I work at Fond du Lac Tribal and Community College and I help take care of this college. I want to take time to welcome everyone here today. It's so nice to see people in the gym and see guests and, and to hear to celebrate the students. I also would like to say congratulations to the law enforcement graduating class of 2021. It certainly has been a long road traveled to get to today and is just cause to celebrate and be proud. The world has certainly changed over the past year and a half. I have full faith in our program and especially our faculty and staff that they have provided you with the necessary tools to enter your chosen profession. You will have challenges and successes. There will be good times and sad times. But as you go forward, rely on your inner strength to persevere. You may never know what you can truly accomplish until faced with obstacles that may come your way. Know that we are proud of you, celebrate with you and your families and friends. Thank you for your intent to serve and stay safe. Miigwech. Good afternoon. My name is Wade Lamarond and I am the program coordinator here for this, uh, for this program and I want to welcome everybody to our beautiful campus. Uh, you guys are a little bit slow on the, on the applause there so I thought I would help you guys out. Uh, this is a celebration, okay? This is a celebration. This is a good, this is a good day and uh, these students have worked really hard so. The, uh, this is not like church or maybe the movie, theater. I'm not going to ask you to put your phones away. I want you to, in fact, I want you to take them out. Uh, I, I do want you guys to respect uh, personal space, but uh, feel free. It's very informal. You want to, if you're not in the right, uh, you know, the right view for, for uh, your graduate to take a photograph, feel free to step up and move around and, and we'll also have an opportunity after the ceremony to, to take some photo ops if you so choose. Uh, yeah, this is a special day, uh, one that you're going to remember, one certainly the, the graduating class is going to remember. I remember when I graduated from Skills. Um, it was a lot of work, a lot of time, a lot of dedication. Um, it was a very hot summer up in Hibbing, uh, and this was before this program had existed, so that's where I went in my skills class. But I remember it, and I remember a lot of my classmates as well. Uh, this is one of those days. This is one of those special days, it's like a high school, college, college graduation, uh, you know, weddings days, uh, birth of your child, uh, grandchild, so on. I mean, it's one of those life mile markers, so I want everyone to remember that and celebrate it. Um, we're going to have a series of uh, different speakers. Uh, it's not going to, you're not going to be here for three hours. And uh, then we'll have just some light refreshments out in the corridor. Uh, but I want everyone just to enjoy their day. And with that, I'll, I'll let Joel step up. Good afternoon. My name is Joel Nichek, and I'm the Law Enforcement Skills Coordinator here at the college. 
And along with Wade Lamron, we make up the full-time faculty staff here for the law enforcement program. Um, I just wanted to say uh, congratulations to all the students. I know that as, uh, as we kind of finish out the, the ceremony today, a lot of times uh, we kind of come and go really, really quick, but um, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. It was a, um, a long year as you guys lived it, so congratulations and uh, be safe as you move forward here. So um, I want to say thanks to everybody for coming today. Um, you know, this is, uh, it's it's great to uh, to be back here, to be back in person, um, having to have have done this a uh, ceremony um, kind of via Zoom with nobody in here, uh, probably less than seven months ago. This is uh, about eight eight nine months ago. Is it uh, it's, this is this is great? So uh, awesome that everybody could come here today. So um, I just say real quick. Uh, so for this group of thirty five here, uh, started on May seventeenth. And for the past seven weeks, um, the students that you see in front of you, uh, they've battled. Um, this has been uh, a, a heck of a journey uh, for this group. Um, things that, that, don't, that you don't know, um, besides the stories that they come home and, and tell you about me, which are not true, by the way. So don't, uh, whatever they told you, it's, and, and later on today, when you have the speakers, the, the student speakers come up, and they start uh, elaborating and, and uh, stretching the truth a little bit, some fishing tales will be told. That is not the case. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, that, that, those things didn't happen. So, uh, but I just wanted to say that um, the things that you don't know, uh, besides the, the sicknesses and uh, the different COVID battle uh, situations that, we've, uh, that they've battled through, um, We've had births. Uh, we've had uh, students who've had uh, family members grow um, during this time period. We've had uh, students who've had family members pass away. And um, it's been, uh, been a heck of a journey. And we also have, uh, we're missing a student here today in that uh, they have a, another location to be with a family member who's uh, suffering from an, an illness. So, um, and that's one thing that I think that we, um, from our program standpoint, that kind of makes us different is that, uh, like Wade says in the very beginning during leadership, that this is a family. We treat this very similar to what you guys are going to experience and see once you get hired at an at a agency, in that these same things that, we, that have happened to you are going to continue to happen to your other brothers and sisters at, the, at an agency that you're working at. And that's life. And it is bigger than the part of what grade did you get on, on this test or what are we doing tomorrow um, that you guys are actually a, a family here. And I think that um, when we said that seven weeks ago, it really didn't uh, click. And I think that now, um, looking back, I think you guys uh, see it and you understand it. So um, anyways, like Mr. Lamron said, uh, today is a celebration, so um, I'm not going to labor the point here. We're going to get right to it. So let's get to the part of uh, the presentation of the class of 2021. And so we're going to be calling up students uh, to accept their certificates. Um, feel free to get up, move around, take some pictures, um, things like that. So here we go. So as we're getting set up here, um, just want to introduce myself. My name is Cassandra Nicholson. I'm the administrative assistant to the law enforcement program. And I just wanted to take a moment and congratulate the class of 2021. Believe it or not, it has been a privilege working with each and every one of you. So congrats. <laughs> Chase Ableiter. Zane Anderson.
Zachary Angel. Oh, wait. You're ahead. <laughs> Kylie Mae Berquist. <sighs> Levi Douglas Bierman. Boyd Lee Billman. Marty Ann Elizabeth Berman. Shelby Ann Bonzik. Marcus Childs. Jared Michael Cleveland. Dylan Patrick Christ. In absentia, C.D. Cusick. Joel Henry Filiatro. Nolan Patrick Forrest. Dariano Tommaso Giancola. Jeremiah Adrian Green. Derek Andre Hussey. Blake Mazzola. Trevor Bradley Minor. Matthew Richard Nelson. Trace Thomas Norton. Colin Gerald O'Toole. Jarvis Roger Paro.
Joshua Frederick Peterson. Lucas Joshua Perlick. Josh Radosevich. Gabriel Alexander Sanchezino. Antonio Jose Sarazua. Stephen Shelton. Lucas Daniel Kenneth Sherburn. Mia Amanda Skeffington. Jessica Ann Wallace. Joshua Lee Wood. Alex Robert Worst. Congratulations again. Okay, uh, so we're going to move into uh, some of the certi or some of the uh, different uh, awards that we give out every single year. And um, as usual, this year uh, I or in normal years I usually do the Instructor of the Year Award. And um, before I get to that, I just wanted to mention um, kind of what makes our program different, or probably more along the lines of unique um, than the other uh, skills programs in this state. Um, there's roughly about 12 law enforcement skills programs uh, within the state that teach um, the actual portions uh, in order for a, per, uh, for a student to get their degree. Um, those things include uh, of the learning objectives or the post-learning objectives, things like firearms and defensive tactics and um, diversity and um, a, a list of over 500. Um, so when, it, when, when, that, when the state put those together uh, way back in the 90s, um, there was multiple different avenues that a program could take on how they wanted to, to teach those. 
And I think that uh, one thing that made our program different back in 2001 that um, the founding fathers at that time uh, figured out that rather than be like the other programs where there was only one or two or maybe a handful of instructors, uh, full-time staff, and that those instructors would teach maybe on Monday firearms, Wednesday would be defensive tactics, on Friday would be um, crime scene investigation. We decided to do things a little bit different. And what we did is we sat down and we said, we want to have the best come here and teach. So our staff, besides uh, what you see here as far as Mr. Lammer and I, our staff actually consists of uh, well over 60 to 70 instructors. And every year we goof this up because <laughs> we have graduation around the same weekend or right before July 4th. And you know how that pans out for instructors as far as vacations during and summers and things like that. Um, and what that means is, is that um, a lot of these instructors have other full-time jobs. Um, this is um, something that they do that they're passionate about, but they do have uh, other, other, other commitments that they have. So we only get a few or a handful because it's July 4th weekend uh, to come uh, to the graduation or the ceremonies, and it's not because they don't want to be here, it's that they have other commitments. And probably the biggest thing is, is that during the year, they give up their vacations. They give up their um, time with their families to come here and teach. And that's really what makes this program really different, is that um, we have the subject matter experts that are here teaching a wide variety, um, that they're, they're, the, they're the instructors who um, their day jobs, they are um, doing the law enforcement work. And then they come here and they pass it on the very next day. So um, I tell you that because that gets us into the actual presentation here of the Skills Instructor of the Year Award. And um, an interesting thing, uh, when you have that many faculty or that many um, staff, hourly staff that's helping you throughout the year, um, one of my jobs is to align those things. So to kind of put that into perspectives you might understand is, is that imagine Christmas time and you work for UPS and you have to organize all of that. Um, that's what I have to do every single year when it comes to instructors and trying to plan around vacations and different uh, things that come up as such as um, instructors get sick, instructors have issues that happen with their families and sometimes they retire. And in this year, uh, one of our primary instructors uh, retired. And um, when they retire, they, uh, sometimes it's a little bit of a notice ahead of time that, hey, I'm gonna be leaving and um, you may wanna start looking for somebody new. You may want to um, get them to, uh, to kind of uh, mentor and coach a new instructor of what they had taught. And sometimes um, we, we get a shorter notice and sometimes it's hard to find um, even, even when they do uh, give us notice that it's hard to find an instructor of the caliber that we're looking for. Um, so this year presented a unique challenge as far as um, one of the topics, uh, it's a very limited uh, number of people that I can kind of dip into the pool and find. Um, Steve Proust, can you come up here? So this year, I had to make a call to the bullpen, and I, uh, besides, besides teaching EVOC and helping with traffic stops and uh, SFSTs and firearms and um, all of the, he's almost, almost as much time here as me, almost. Um, I called upon him and I said, hey, <laughs> next week, I need you to do a full class on crash investigation. He's like, ooh. I believe that's what she said. He said, oof, oof. Yep. Um, but he pulled it off, and uh, he, uh, he helped us out uh, in a big way this year. So, um, But besides uh, helping out this year, in the past years, um, no different, is that uh, he's been one of my go-to instructor guys here. So um, this year, the class uh, voted Steve Pruce, Skills Instructor of the Year. Um, you're selected by your students for his instructional skill, patience, and for being a positive role model. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it.
The show is. The show is mine. I gotta talk. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, thank you. Uh, thank you to the class. It's I'm very humbled for this, actually. Uh, I don't do this for accolades or awards or for an opportunity to stand up here and, and talk in front of a group, although I don't mind it, so I hope you're comfortable. <laughs> but I do it because I want to see the men and women that are willing to get into this profession get the best training and opportunities that they can get. And this program is second to none in this state, and it shows with the product that we are turning out uh, year by year. Very capable young men and women that get into this job that flourish, that are extremely successful, and do good work. So this class will be no different. A lot of hard work and dedication went into this year, and it was really fun to see them at the beginning and see where they ended up here at this point now. So again, I'm very grateful, humbled, and thank you, and good luck. So if you're following along on the program, up next is the Les Northrop Leadership Award. Uh, this, is, uh, this leadership award is unique to our program. I'll just give you a little bit of a background what this is and uh, what it means to our program. Uh, the award itself is named after Les Northrop, who is a, a Fond du Lac Tribal member and elder uh, with uh, the Fond du Lac Reservation. And he came through our program at the tender age of 60. Six zero sixty. Um, I had kind of a funny observation this year. I had some students looking through the different past classes, and uh, I was just kind of watching them. And they rolled over into the uh, class that contained Les Northrup, and sure enough, they found this uh, elderly statesman up there. And I think the quote was, "Whoa, look at how old that dude is." Well, just think about all the physical stuff and uh, how demanding this program is, and then think about going through it when you're 60 years old. Uh, um, it was really quite special. And, and not only that, uh, at 60 years, obviously, Les had experienced a lot of life, and he shared that with his classmates. And uh, the uh, program coordinator and skills coordinator at the time were very impressed with uh, just his leadership um, and so they, they created an award named after, after him called the Les Northrop Leadership Award. Uh, we we uh, focus a lot on leadership, okay? Uh, we, we know that uh, it's what the public expects, it's what uh, the administration expects, it's what your sergeant's going to expect, uh, it's what your fellow officers expect. And so we hammer this home throughout the program. Uh, this, uh, this particular award is, uh, I think, is really special for the recipient just because it, it, you're nominated uh, by your fellow classmates. And uh, it's also a great way to bolster your application <laughs> to say that you're a Les Northrop Leadership uh, Award winner. Uh, so with any, without any more drama, uh, this year's class, uh, the award goes to Boyd Billman. I like to do this like it's the championship belt or something. He just told me I need to share a few words. Um, like Mr. Olnicek and Mr. Lamrad had talked about, this class is a family. And I think each and any, every one of you could have obtained this award, and I am honored to receive this. I am honored to be up here with you all. Each and every one of you I consider my friends. And I can't wait to see how after this we can all go out and become leaders within our own departments, within our own communities, and within our own families. So thank you. Okay, now we'd like to ask a uh, former graduate uh, to step up. Um, Taylor Sutzman is a past graduate of class of 2012. 
Uh, she also you know, is working for Duluth PD. She's going to share uh, her experiences and, and also let the class know a little bit what to expect. Uh, she also has returned to the program and has started to teach in the program. And I can't tell you what that means to all of us uh, to have our past graduates come back and, and then give back to the next generation of law enforcement. So with that, I'll let you say a few words. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. As Mr. Lameron said, my name is Taylor Stutzman. I'm currently a police officer in the city of Duluth. Uh, I'm an investigator right now with the Special Investigations Unit and the Lease for Drug and Violent Crime Task Force. Uh, it's been a while since I put an actual uniform on, so I was really thankful that it fit when I put it on this morning before I came here. Um, about nine years ago, I was sitting right where you guys are. Uh, I was born and raised in Duluth before graduating from here in 2012. I was lucky enough to get hired shortly thereafter uh, in 2012 with the Duluth Police Department. I remember it being an exciting time, and I want to say congratulations to you all. This program can be challenging even without a global pandemic that shuts everything down. So uh, shout out to you guys and to the awesome staff here who, who made it all happen. Since Sergeant O asked me to speak a few weeks ago, I spent quite a bit of time trying to decide uh, what I was going to get up here and talk about. I kept coming back to a few different points that I wanted to make. Uh, I guess advice, if you will, uh, for the journey ahead, both as a new cop and as you progress into your careers. Field training and being a new cop is stressful. Uh, I cringe even thinking about this story now, but I'm gonna share it anyway. Uh, partway through my field training, a fellow recruit and I also, who was on FTO, get called to as a disturbance of sort at a house in a relatively busy neighborhood. I don't remember the exact details of the call, uh, but I remember going inside and finding a very angry, yelling, swearing suspect, pacing back and forth with his family watching, uh, bleeding from his hand. I don't know how he managed, he managed to cut himself before we got there. As, you find, as you'll find out uh, once you guys are on field training, it's customary, customary when you're a recruit that the other officers on scene kind of sit back and, and watch the show. Uh, they let you learn uh, as you go and learn to handle a call, uh, but it's also a good way for them to not have to do paperwork. Um, <laughs> um, it's a chance, that, but it's your chance as a recruit to show that you can take control of the scene. Uh, for whatever reason on this particular call, uh, everything that I had ever learned in my life, including its skills and all common sense, just went out the window. Control was the absolute last thing that this suspect, or that uh, the other, my fellow recruit and I had over the suspect. The suspect's yelling and screaming went on for entirely too long. And I think the only person more angry than him was my lieutenant who had shown up on scene and wondered in a very colorful way why the situation hadn't been handled yet. So the other recruit and I, we snap out of it a bit, uh, get him into handcuffs and start walking him towards the front door, obviously still flustered about everything that was going on. Of course, as we're walking out, the suspect's pants managed to get caught on, a, on the front door causing my partner, the suspect, and the suspect's pants to fall promptly on the ground. The lieutenant's anger turned quickly into hysterical laughter as two recruits and a pantless suspect were laying face down on the ground in the front yard of a house on a busy street. <laughs> we were finally able to get it together enough to get the suspect out of there, but I remember a particularly long debrief with our field trainers after that one. That's a long story to illustrate my first piece of advice. You're going to fall on your face, and if you're like Lee, that might even be literally. But pick yourself up and dust yourself off. The key to field training is to show that you can learn from your mistakes and not make them again. Next, find the humor. This job is hilarious, tragic, and terrifying, sometimes with all minutes or seconds of one another. Be professional, but don't forget the, the benefits of good-natured humor. Make a point to remember the funny calls because they may be, keep, they may be what keeps you to coming back after the tough ones. Next, be nice to your dispatchers. Just believe me on that one. Take care of others. This is obviously in our job description as public servants, but I also mean be good to the people around you. I've gotten to do some amazing things in my career because of my fellow officers and the leadership and support staff that I have around me every day when I go to work. This career is extremely stressful uh, externally, but, it can be, but the inner workings of a police department can be stressful and competitive and heartbreaking at times as well. Just remember that we're all on the same team, and then when you lift others up, you lift yourself up as well. Lastly, I know it sounds cheesy, but I find myself thinking often of the Mr. Rogers quote about looking for the helpers during tough times. From my experience, what he said is completely true. 
We go to work and sometimes deal with horrific and hateful things, and then we come home and turn on the TV or browse social media, we might see more of the same. It can be easy to get jaded, but I promise you, if you look for it, you'll always find the good. Sometimes it's obvious, like the incredible support bestowed upon our department after the recent, recent tragic losses of our canine partners, Haas and Luna. But it's there on a smaller scale, too. In the passersby who stop to check on people before we can arrive to a crash scene, or people risking their own safety to apprehend a suspect on a violent rampage who had just attacked an innocent victim. I've seen these things with my own eyes time and time again. I, remind, I remember one incident recently, a uh, quick arrest before lunch. As a side note, that's another piece of advice. There's no, no such thing as anything quick before lunch. Because you know, if you make plans to do anything, those are going to be spoiled. Anyways, this quick arrest attempt turned into a several hours long standoff. It was hot and uncomfortable, and we sent, spent several hours in this neighborhood waiting for the situation to be resolved. Uh, the going out and arresting people and the adrenaline rush, it's a blast. It's my, one of my favorite parts of this job. But what I remember from that day the most is the kindness of the public. We had one family in particular. They had several young kids who even late into the night opened up their home to us, offering us food, use of their restroom, <clears throat> letting us take breaks in their driveway and offering words of encouragement. I promise you that no matter what it seems like, the world is filled with a lot more good than bad. That's all I really have to say today, but I want to say thank you to you all for choosing this career, and I want to say thank you to the uh, friends and family in attendance for your support of your loved ones as they start this journey. That's all I have. Best of luck and be safe. Thank you, Taylor. So we're to that point. I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but we're to the point of the student commentary section. And uh, this is the part that I'm going to remind you that uh, I may come up as a topic at some point. So um, don't believe anything they, have, they tell you about the, any of this stuff here. So, um, all right. First up, Boyd Billman. Got to find the speech here. What? Well, contrary to Mr. O, I will talk about him, but as we learned in report writing and courtroom testimony, just the facts. Good afternoon, fellow cadets, and welcome faculty, instructors, family, friends, and others who have all gathered here to celebrate our great accomplishment today. First off, I'd like to congratulate my fellow cadets. We did it. Remarkably, we all entered into this endeavor in our own unique way, but we all have finished stronger and together. Some of us started this academic and skills journey well before we even finished our high school career, whereas others started this program many years after that. Several of us have planned for this to be our career path long ago, yet some of us have only recently found this to be our true calling for one good reason or another. Regardless, we are here now to celebrate the accomplishment of the first of many goals throughout our career in this criminal justice system. For what it's worth, I am proud, for, proud of each and every one of you beside me here today for sticking to that goal and accomplishing it. Thank you, and congratulations. To our instructors, thank you for taking the time to share your skills and knowledge during your busy schedules with us and to support us through our skills journey. Together, you have empowered and helped us to create the next generation of law enforcement. And to our family and friends, to our loved ones, and for those who came to support us here today, thank you. You all represent the strong support system that each of us have relied on throughout this academic training and skills journey here at Fond du Lac College. If the cadets have not told you so, many of us will still need your steady love and support as we begin, if not continue, the search for jobs in this noble career of law enforcement. And you will still be of utmost importance to us as we secure positions in this field and continue to grow. To my fellow classmates and cadets, holy buckets. We did it. I want you to recall back to the first time many of us met, and I don't mean on Zoom, I mean in person, downstairs in the DT classroom. For me, I recall this being when we first received one of many large binders or documents and packets. This was when we began talks of the logistics for summer skills 
and for this very day. And at this point, I'm sure many of us probably thought that today was going to take forever to reach. Many long, hard weeks, many sleepless nights, and busy weekends. For me, this day came quicker than I would have liked. Over the past several months, many, if not all of you, have become my friends. And together, we have overcome many challenges and formed many friendships that may last years. Together, we talked about diversity, learned how to be strong, successful leaders. Together, we acquired skills to protect ourselves from those who wish to do us harm. Together, we trained with three different weapon systems and how to use them safely. Together, we learned how to write detailed reports and practice our courtroom testimony. Together, we walked through CS gas in the pit of despair at the hands of Mr. Olnicek. Together, we endured the wrath of OC spray. And together, we experienced the taser, or as I like to describe it, we experienced 50,000 volts of electricity surging throughout our bodies at, again, the hands of Mr. O. <laughs> together, we learned how to conduct safe traffic stops and to investigate crime scenes for evidence. And together, we studied ways to prevent the predictable aspects of this dangerous career and how to best take care of ourselves. And together, class, we graduate. If you didn't catch on, I used together several times to describe our journey, and this was intentional because we did do all of these things together. And together we supported each, each other as we needed it along the way. And as we graduate today and go off into our career of choice, we will quick, quickly join the larger comradeship of law enforcement. This comradeship, or brotherhood, as Investigator Stutzman talked about, will be strong and provide us with the support that we will need to tackle each and every day of our challenging careers. However, with the current climate surrounding law enforcement, this closeness may easily lead to cynicism if we are not careful. Yes, we are all here today because we have dedicated ourselves to something bigger than us, but I encourage all of you to keep friends and meet new ones outside of this noble profession to limit that onset of said cynicism. As most of us learned about in Intro to Criminology, Sir Robert Peel was coined the father of policing. Back in 1892, he shared nine policing principles, one of which I believe holds immense value today. Robert Peel said that the police are the public, and the public are the police. The police only being members of the public who are paid to give full-time attention to the duties which are incumbent on every citizen in the interests of community welfare and existence. I share this with you as we are entering into this career that it is, excuse me, as we enter into this career that is in the public spotlight more and more today. Because we are a part of the public, it must be actively building and maintaining trust with the public in order to carry on. After finishing the Skills Academy with each of you, I have no doubt that we will be able to do just that and spark the needed change in the world today. I again congratulate all of you, my fellow cadets. I encourage all of you to leave here today, remembering we have grown as individuals, and we now carry the power to be a part of the advancement of law enforcement across this great nation. Thank you. Thank you, Boyd. And uh, now Jarvis Parle. Bonjour. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I don't know how I follow that up. Uh, I didn't prepare anything. I think my class is kind of thinks I'm a little crazy for not preparing, but uh, in these times, in my culture, we believe that the Creator guides us. And so when we get put in these situations, um, the Creator is going to give us the words to say. So I want to start with thanking my classmates. Thank you all for everything you've helped me with. Um, thank you to, uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you to uh, Mr. O, um, to Wade. I owe you guys a lot. Uh, I started this program back in 2015. Uh, due to some health reasons, I stepped away and I came back. So here we are. Um, thank you to the drum group for being here. I um, just want to recognize some people that I see in the crowd. Uh, Chief Randall, um, Wiggy, Vern, 
Stephanie Hammett, Roxanne, drum group, Wally Dupis, investigator Barney, my beautiful daughters back there, my gorgeous, significant other, wife, girlfriend, everything. We've been together for 19 years. Um, my father. Ah. So they put a time limit on us, three to five minutes. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> Sergeant Durfee. Yeah. Yeah, we're here. All right. So thank you all for being here. Thank you guys for coming. I've learned a lot and um, I'm still learning. But some things that I've learned interesting about this program, about Mr. O, is you didn't want this look. <laughs> you didn't want that. <laughs> you don't want that look. Or, or this one. Huh. No, you don't want, you don't want that stuff. But uh, what you do want is one of these. Yeah, yeah. That's what you want, because that's a compliment. So <laughs> I think we've all learned that. And uh, Josh Radosevich got a lot of these. <laughs> and for one of the reasons was because back in firearms, um, you know, it's wet and rainy out, and he comes bouncing into the parking lot. Mr. O always talked about flying in and parking and just slow down. We don't need to rush. Take your time. And here comes Josh bouncing into the parking lot, breaks his splash guard on his vehicle, goes and parks by the fence. Nice, beautiful lawn. And I don't know. Does he got bald tires? I don't know what he's got on his vehicle. But flat ground gets stuck. Gets stuck on flat ground. <laughs> and so here we are. There's, uh, I think Nolan actually ended up coming back and helping us, but we're all trying to push him, trying to push his car out. And the more we push, the more the car digs into the ground. So we're sitting there trying to get this car out. We can't get it out. Who happens to come walking out? Mr. O. <laughs> what does he do? <laughs> Radosevich, what are you doing now? This morning, <laughs> Mr. O threatened to jump out the window because of a comment Radosevich had to say. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, here we are. Here we are. Um, Colin, if you're watching, our thoughts are with you, buddy. We haven't thought about you at all. Or we haven't, we haven't uh, forgot about you. Sorry about that. We haven't forgot about you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was supposed to be a special moment, but I kind of messed that up. Um, now into getting to some, uh, some serious moments. Like I said, here we are. Here I am. Six years later from 2015. And when they say, don't give up and to follow your dreams... This is what it is. This is what it is. And I'm looking back there at my daughters because they're about to be seniors and go into um, college soon. And to my beautiful babies, don't ever give up. Push. Um, always strive for your dreams. Always. Because when you want something, Eventually, you'll get it. Work hard, push hard, and you'll get there. Um, my brother, who's no, no longer here with us, he passed away in 2018. Um, twin brother. Here I am. Yep. So, and back to our class. Yeah, we often heard about the pendulum is swinging, and where it's at now, 
we're entering law enforcement in a very critical time. And it's time to get that pendulum swinging back in and to have it level out. And it's time, it's time for us to be that pendulum, to get that pendulum swinging back to where it should be. Be the good people that you are. Be the good people that you can be. Treat people with respect and you will be treated with respect as well. Don't treat people like you're better than them. Don't treat people like um, they're below you. People have bad days, and people will always have bad days. And who comes when people have bad days? You guys might be that brightness of that day. Even though you're coming at a bad time, you guys are probably going to change that life. And I'm honored to be able to be here with you guys. And I'm honored to have the instructors that we have. And I just want to say a thank you to, to everybody, everybody here, everybody at home watching. Mom, my mom who can't be here, she's doing some doctor visits. So, um, you know, just want to say thank you to everybody. Miigwech. Joshua Radosovich. Now hold on. Now hold on. Before he gets a chance to talk, there's a part of Jarvis's story that he did not include. Is that correct, Josh? Maybe. 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 Uh huh. Tell tell him tell him what had to happen. Which part? Which time? Uh -huh. About about at the out at the range, you getting stuck. That's the you are yeah. I'll, I'll say it for you. That's right. I had to tow him out with my own vehicle. I'll send you the bill later, oh. bud. I really don't know how to follow up with that. Um, <laughs> I wasn't sure he would talk about it earlier in the classroom when we were taking our exam, but we'll keep that in the back pocket. Well, I was told this was a rehearsal, so in following up behind my other fellow uh, speechers, um, it's big shoes to fill, so I'm giving my best shot, so go, uh, go with me, all right? Um, I said, well, I have a bad feeling about this, because I was talking to Mr. O, and he said we were going to tell a joke uh, before I spoke, but he introduced me instead. So, <laughs> in case you didn't hear already, my name is uh, Josh Dasovich, and something you should know about me, I uh, can tell by their stories and it's all made up, uh, is like I like to keep things light. So, that being said, I'm a fan of icebreakers, so... It's evolves all of you, but don't have to move out of your seats. Uh, go to the person next to you, give them a fist bump, uh, tell them your favorite food, and give them a fun nickname. I'm sorry, I'm extra, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, settle down, settle down, settle down. Uh, now that we're back, uh, let me start by saying, isn't it great that we can uh, be by each other? You okay? <laughs> All right, recover. All right, anyways, isn't it great that we can be uh, by each other and do stuff like this again, you know, no more social distancing and mask wearing and, you know, be enjoying by the company of our loved ones and friends and family. It's, it's good to be starting to get back to the, the normal. Um, I just want to say that it is an honor and privilege to be up here today amongst all of you uh, and talk about the law enforcement skills class of 2021. I can tell you that we are a very hardworking group and that does not give up, accepts a challenge, and has a win-then-quits mentality. 
I see in our eyes every day of wanting to better ourselves, but not only for ourselves, um, but for the community that we are, we are about to be policing. Uh, letting nothing uh, stop us, not COVID, not exams, hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of PowerPoint. Uh, lack of sleep, long days, and nor the world that surrounds us. But even through all those things, I can now have done with the support of our friends, our family, uh, loved ones, um, those that are here with us today, and those are, who are here with us in spirit. Uh, rest in peace to my grandparents and anybody else who's our classmates who have lost loved ones recently as well. Um, uh, can we please give a, a round of applause for our loved ones that have supported us today. We've gone through a lot of training, from physical and mental training, thanks to our instructors, um, with a lot of time and energy to get us ready and prepared for everything we needed to know and always encouraging us. They have a lot of patience. I would know because I was constantly cracking jokes, trying to make them laugh, even at my own expense, uh, which made me a pretty easy target for both the instructors and my fellow classmates. Uh, <laughs> Mr. O once said, see me, know me, since then, I lived in constant fear. Class, do you ever lay looking up at the stars and think of all the messed up things in the world? Like, why would Mr. O be smiling when we were tased, <laughs> OC sprayed, and unleashing the rest of the gas canisters he'd been saving into the pit of despair while he was sitting on the top of the hill smiling? Uh, now here's something we learn, and that is filling each other's buckets. So let me fill my classmates' buckets. For all those out there who are applying for jobs, and it seems like it's taking forever and not getting where you want it. Don't get discouraged. Do not give up. Everything happens for a reason. Remember, as Wayne Gretzky once said, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So keep trying and keep applying. You'll get where you need to go. So when we do get out there and trying to leave a legacy, have it not be for the money or the recognition, but the interactions to those whom you cross paths with with a little more trust, happiness, and hope. And I hope I filled your buckets as well as you filled mine. And it's come for schooling, but it's just the beginning for our future. And I'd like to say, I didn't just meet new classmates, I met new friends. Law enforcement class of 2021, I enjoy getting to know you and wish you the very best in life. My name is Josh Radosevich, AKA Robot, uh, signing off. All right, thank you students. Actually, it was pretty clean. I always like it when I don't get touched. Mr. O, that's not the same. Um, okay, so we're just about done here, and you guys have been sitting for quite a while. I'll keep my, my closing comments brief, but I just got to say how proud I am of this class. Um, you know, it is uh, a mix of students coming back from previous class, uh, you know, classes that, that had to stop for a variety of reasons, uh, some of which was, was COVID-related. Uh, we, we have uh, people in this class that uh, come to us from corrections and have different backgrounds. Uh, we've had students jump in from other programs. Uh, they weren't able to, to complete a section or, or had uh, something come up that prevented them from doing that, so we were able to accommodate. Um, so it's really quite a mix, uh, this class. And every, we always say every class has its own personality, and this one certainly does. Um, so, to become a police officer in the state of Minnesota is not easy. Um, you know, so, you know, you have to have all the state requirements, right? Uh, you have to complete that, 
a, a minimum of a two-year degree. You got to be at least 18 years old. You got to have a driver's license. You got to pass the physical part. You got to go through a psychological. Um, it's intense. And this skills portion is the most intense portion of our program and and because we know this mr Ole and i have been doing this a, a long time together um back may 17th we uh we addressed the class and, and we still were under uh, restrictions with covid and we we're actually uh ha, you know holding classes in this gymnasium which was less than ideal and uh and so because we know what's coming we show up and we basically say, hey, this is all the different ways that you can mess this up, <laughs> okay? And we have learned from, from, other, uh, from other classes. So we want to try to pass this on. Um, we say, hey, we are here for your success, right? And then we start going into about a dozen different ways that students have either been asked to leave the program or that life has just got in the way. And it's, uh, like I said, it's, it's very intense. You have to be here uh, five days a week. This year, because of COVID, we're actually one year longer than we normally are. And a lot of times we were running seven days a week. Okay, so if your loved one here uh, was, was worn out and tired and complaining about uh, the long days and classroom uh, and all the things that went along with this program, it, it's legit. It's, um, it's true. It happened. Uh, it's, it's difficult to get through. And um, no, the past coordinator, Scott Lyons, typically shows up for graduation. Uh, I want to thank everybody that, that made an effort on this holiday weekend uh, because we're a, a week longer that, that showed up. Uh, we have tremendous uh, subject matter experts that teach in this, in this program, and it's in addition to their normal job duties. And so think about being a police officer today, going to work 40 plus hours, uh, overtime, all the different uh, things that uh, law enforcement is currently uh, needing to deal with on top of this job uh, with all the social things that are going on um, and then doing extra stuff you know asked to do extra stuff extra shifts be on the riot line all these different things that that uh, the, the the working officers that the teaching our program have been asked to do and then have them come and so I get why maybe they didn't sacrifice a holiday weekend from being here but I, I thank those that did it means a lot to our students to see the instructors show up um, so when we address the students and, and Cassandra Nicholson, the, the, our um, awesome administrative uh, secretary for the program, knows that I don't like to speak in absolutes and even talked about speaking in absolutes, the always and forevers, because it's just it's just something I just tried to eliminate out of my, my vocabulary because uh, I just think you're, you're, uh, you're better off if you do that. Well, I tell the students, we have never started with a skills program and graduated the same amount until this year. It <laughs> Unbelievable. And that's why I don't speak in absolutes, because boom, then it's gone, right? Um, to do that with an extended week, running seven days a week during COVID and all the challenges we had with trying to adhere to the CDC and, and with COVID, it is unbelievable. If I would have lost a, a paycheck, right? If I would have bet to say, are, are we going to do it? Is this the year that's going to happen? Uh, as much as we want every single year and every student to graduate with the program, we know how difficult it is and things that are a lot of times out of the student's control and they don't make it through. Um, I just, you know, uh, Mr. Paro's story about coming back, man, I mean, that, that's, that's what it's all about, perseverance, and that's really what defines this class. You guys per persevered, and I'm so proud of you. Uh, so, family, I know that you were probably really uh, upset. Maybe, uh, maybe there was some anxiety when your loved one told you that, hey, I want to go into law enforcement, right? Um, especially with what's going on in our society today. Um, I'm sure that the students 
when you, when you shared this with family and friends, you probably got, at times, negative reactions, right? You probably had friends that crossed you off their list never to call you back again because you're going to become a police officer, right? Uh, it's not easy. It's, it's something that starts really right from um, saying, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna go to school to be a police officer. And then you run into all of the challenges of getting to be post-licensed. So they're still not here yet. They're gonna, they, they came, they walked through the line, they, they shook our hands, they got their pin, they got their, their certificate, but they still have to pass that Minnesota Post exam. They still have to apply and get hired. You then have to enter in FTO. You, you have a year's probationary that, you know, if things don't work out, the department can just release you without any union protection. It is not easy, okay? And that's what they have ahead of you. So. As much support as you've given them so far up to this point, they're going to continue to need your support. There's going to be disappointments. You know, they're going to apply to departments and maybe not get, make the cut. Um, encourage them. Because never before have we need to have people like the students that are sitting before you step up and do this noble work. The noble work of being a police officer. Uh, I recruit out of this program, and here's what I say. It is a great way to spend a life. It's meaningful. You're going to spend your life doing very important and meaningful work. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I will get people coming up to me since I've been retired uh, from law enforcement now for seven, eight years. Boy, I bet you're sure glad you're uh, out of that profession, eh? And... Uh, and Scott Lyons also mentioned this, too, and said, he says, you know what, I turned to those people in the grocery store or else and said, I would love to be in this profession right now. I would love to be, maybe just because I want to be 25 again, I don't know, but I would love to do my career over again. Um, no, it's, it's a huge challenge, and you guys are up for it, okay? So I wish you all the luck. Um, you guys are always graduates of Fond du Lac College. You can always come back. We need to know where you land. Keep in touch. Um, come back and teach. Uh, you're looking at maybe you, uh, you look at these students in the gray shirts and you think, well, uh, they're just cadets right now. They're just you know, law enforcement students. Uh, you have to see their potential. Uh, f future instructors, future sergeants, future lieutenants, future chiefs of police future you know, director of FBI, uh, it is, the limit is limitless. Their, their future is bright, and uh, they can go a lot of, a lot of places. Uh, lastly, I just want to thank everybody. Um, there's been a lot of pressure on our administration. I want to thank um, Rocks for the Pipe Ceremony and the drum group. Um, I love the fact uh, that you come to this campus and you get immersed in the diversity of this campus and I know I've learned so much about Native American culture since I've since I've taught here and it's uh, it's terrific um, especially when you you know so policing is you're gonna go police people that it may be different than you and on this campus uh, you get that you get that right away uh, I want to thank the awesome uh, instructors that showed up Mr. Zacker from our board um, the custodians that clean this place, that, that uh, were keeping it uh, clean uh, for COVID. Um, Cassandra. Um, but most off, I got to, and, and Joel's going to hate that I'm going to do this, but um, nobody in our program has been more affected than this guy. Okay? Uh, he's a guy that... <laughs> yes. So here's a guy that works full-time doing exactly this training for the Duluth Police Department. Um, we are blessed with having the best skills instructor in the state running this pro skills program. And he's had to deal with instructors having to leave. Uh, basically, again, just, hey, you know what, it's been fun uh, teaching at the college, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not only quitting law enforcement, but I'm moving out of state. Um, he's had to rework schedules when we've stopped and started, uh, which is a logistical nightmare, coordinating with our third-party vendors uh, because we do a lot of our stuff 
you know, at the Lake Superior College site, uh, the Duluth PD range, and then up at the Duluth airport. And um, I'm shocked that he's sitting here, <laughs> that he's still here. Um, because uh, I think uh, a lesser man would have just dropped his pencil or pen and just walked away because it was that intense at times. Um, the pressures that he was having at work, working overtime, and then running this program. So Joel, thank you so much for the work that you did in this program. Um, you need a break and you're gonna get one here now. So with that, I'll let him stand up and say a few parting words. I gotta do the oath. I'm not done here yet. Okay, so I, I would like to have the graduating class please stand up, grab your program, and on the back of the program is the oath. Please stand up, raise your right hand, and repeat after me. On my honor, I will never betray my badge, my integrity, my character, or the public trust. I'll always have the courage to hold myself and others accountable for our actions. I always, always uphold the Constitution, my community, and the agency that I serve. Please be seated. So those words are more than just, you know, write it, you know, words on a page. This is, this is something that if you take this to heart, if you believe it, you're not going to have any issues with some of the, 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 the problems that policing has encountered across this country. Um, you know, making sure that I, I, I thank Joel and, and everybody else, I got a little bit off track, and so I do have one other thing I want to cover because it's really important. I, I, I end all, all my graduations that I've been participated with. Um, a short quote by Mother Teresa, um, and it's as follows. Um, people, people are often unreasonable and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you're kind, people may accuse you of ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you're honest, people may cheat you, but be honest anyway. If you find happiness, people may be jealous. Be happy anyway. Always fill your bucket, right? The good you do today may be forgotten tomorrow, but do good anyway. Give the world your very best, and you'll have it, and it may never be enough, but give your best anyway. For in the end, it's about, all about you and the Creator, and it's never between you and anyone else. Please remember that during your career. Thank you. Wow, um, thank you. So, um, usually at the end here, I usually try to find some funny quotes or some witty humor to pass along to you guys, and uh, I think we've uh, run pretty long, and I'm kind of out of, uh, out of that stuff. So, um, <laughs> I, do, I, I will say uh, just uh, one thing here, and that's, um, I'm gonna tell a little story. Um, it's kind of a, it's a story that just took place uh, earlier this week, and I think it kind of sums up um, some guidance for you guys moving forward here. Um, just this week, I was at uh, one of our local, or at the local Dairy Queen, and um, I could tell when I went to, to kind of place my order that the, one of the, the cashiers behind the counter obviously was new. Um, you know, they got their, their nice uniform, it's all pressed and cleaned, right? And they got the, the assistant manager standing right next to them, and and I placed my order, and you, he was punching buttons there and goofing it up and uh, going back and trying to fix it. And uh, 
Um, you could just tell that there was a, everything was new to this person. Um, and then as I sat down after uh, getting my food, um, I'm kind of watching, and as the assistant manager's teaching him to put the little curly, the little curly, uh, little cone top to it, you know, and he's trying, and he's he's making cones. He's got them stacked up on the side there, and I'm like, holy cow, that's that's a lot of ice cream. And uh, so, and then so he's he's muddling through that, and um, and then the assistant manager says, "Come on, I got a new project. Uh, we're gonna go clean the bathroom." And he stopped dead in his tracks. And he's like, and he had that deer in the headlight look of, I did not sign up for this. This is not what I bargained for. And um, <laughs> that got me thinking is, is that in the next few months, you guys are going to have a lot of deer in the headlight looks. Um, you're going to come, you're going to be going to calls where you're not going to have the answers to. Um, a lot of moments, a lot of bathroom cleaning moments where like your first arrest or the first time that you have to fight, physically fight with somebody, the first DUI traffic stop that you have to make and you're trying to remember, what did Mr. Lemon say about walk and turn? Um, your first dead body and the smells that you're going to have with that and uh, the stories that you're going to bring home to your loved ones and families about those incidences. Um, your first car wreck where you have to go home and tell somebody that somebody's not coming home for, for tonight or forever. Um, those are going to be those deer in the headlight looks. And I guess where I'm going with that is that you're going to have a lot of bathrooms to clean and they're not going to be fun. And um, like an old veteran uh, law enforcement cop, uh, when I first got hired, he told me, he said, get, get used to losing, kid. And I thought, what the heck is that? Get used to losing. I'm a type A personality like probably most of the people that are sitting up here. That doesn't compute well. That's not how we operate, right? That's not how we're programmed. And as time has went on, um, it kind of has uh, kind of dawned on me that I don't think that what he meant by getting used to losing I don't think that, I think I took it the wrong way. Um, I think what he probably meant, unlike that scoreboard up there, your career is not going to be based off of a number of who won and who lost. It's going to be based off of the interactions that you've had with the public and the people that you serve. So um, understand that you're going to clean a lot of bathrooms. And it's not um, each bathroom that you have to clean. It's going to be how you clean that. Take pride and remember um, what you've learned here for you, through your training. So um, that's what I have today. So congratulations to you guys. I wish you the best. Um, be safe. So. Fire the colors. Yeah. 